Thank you everyone for, uh, for coming. Um, I think the last time we were together was post trade deadline. So, um, obviously a lot has, has happened since then, but, um, you know, at the time we talked about the, the group that we had that we believed in. I think those guys, um, despite the ultimate end that was painful, uh, did a lot to, to prove us right. Um, a great run, uh, towards the playoffs and then, um, a hard fought series against the Warriors. And I think right now we're, we're seeing, um, some of the recognition for that group from, I got a list here, so I don't forget them all, but, uh, Domas and De'Aaron as all-stars, um, Keegan setting the rookie three-point record, uh, coach, unanimous coach of the year. Uh, congrats to him and his staff. Um, Pacific Division champions, De'Aaron, Clutch Player of the Year award. Um, and, of course, uh, the return to the to the playoffs for this city and organization was fantastic. Um, you know, a tough end uh, always is when you make the playoffs, but i um, proud of – Coach Brown and his staff for what they did from from day one uh, up until game seven here. So uh, a fantastic run. Um, and, uh, you know, we've, we've talked, I think, since I came here about kind of a, a short-term goal of making the playoffs. Uh, I'm happy to finally have that box checked. Um, but it also means now on to the next goal of, of building this thing into a – uh, a long-term playoff team, uh, win some rounds in the playoffs, and ultimately contend for a title like we've talked. Um, so the job's never done. We know we got work to do, but uh, happy to take questions. Yeah, Money, first of all, congratulations on uh, Executive of the Year. Um, secondly, you've built a staff here. You've built a culture here over your, your three years. So how good does it feel to actually see it work out? I mean, when you take a job like this that many had failed in before, it's not a sure thing, but you guys have really turned the, the corner here. And yeah. where's your sweater vest? <laughs> I, we were just talking about that on the way over. My, my signature vest uh, is – it was uh, it was lucky for, for parts, but it's in the wash right now. So, um, But, yeah, no, first of all, thanks to uh, Vivek for just his, you know, faith in, in, in me and my group. Um, and uh, we got the group back there, um, who I've mentioned many times, but Wes, Phil, Paul – uh, Alvin on and on down for our front office. It's a lot of work, but, um, that went into it, but those guys do a ton. Um, but I think, um, yeah, it's, we always have, you know, I think the, the faith that in the decisions we're making, um, that we think it will work out, it will, we're putting ourselves in a good position, but it's always nice to have the validation. We got a lot of that this year. Um, we know there's more to go, but it's certainly nice to, uh, to see the results, uh, um, you know, manifest on the floor. Yeah, I think, well, first of all, Mike's unanimous coach of the year speaks for itself um, and the job that him and his staff did, fantastic. Um, and uh, I think I've talked a lot about, too, um, you know, I know my, my strengths and weaknesses, and Mike's a fantastic compliment to him. He's an incredible culture builder. Um, you know, we, we saw from day one all the way through the, the ups and downs of the of the season, we had a pretty young team, and uh, to be able to coach them, get the most out of them, uh, prepare them. We had, I don't even know, five or six guys, I think, make their playoff debut this this year. Um, and to take the defending champs to seven, to have those guys continue to respond while still having a voice that they listen to through all that is, uh, you know, what makes them special. Yeah, I just want to ask you about two specific player situations in the offseason. Uh, starting with Sabonis, uh, obviously he's extension eligible. The CBA has, has altered the rules a little bit. How do you view, like, do you feel like that is a conversation that will be explored? Yeah, Domas is uh, obviously an all-star this year. Um, I think should be all-NBA along with De'Aaron, so we'll find that out soon. Um, but, yeah, Domas is a, a huge part of, obviously, what we do, and um, we're going to, you know, do all we can to, to keep him here and build around him. And then uh, Barnes is probably your highest profile free agent. Just what's your view on, on his potential future here? Yeah. No, I think for us, you know, look, we're, I don't even know, three, four days away from a pretty painful 
And um, so we're going to sit down and have all those conversations. Obviously, Harrison's been a fantastic uh, part of our team, a, a vet leader, and, and uh, one of two guys with championship experience for us, which was you know a big part of uh, getting our young guys ready to go. So we'll, we'll have all those conversations uh, in the coming weeks. Monty, Mike has said even yesterday and, and throughout the year that um, to go to the next level is going to be even harder than what you guys achieved making the playoffs. Just what's that look like in, in your mind, the, the team taking that next step towards perennially contending and then potentially you know, becoming a championship type team? One great thing um, is when you're, when you're able to, to kind of break through into the playoffs with a team you know, as young as ours, it gives you the chance to have a nice long playoff run and, and have a lot of success in the playoffs. It, do, it doesn't guarantee anything. So we know we got a lot of work to do. Um, you know, 48 wins is fantastic for, uh, for this group, but teams that go deep in the playoffs are usually winning in the fifties or, or higher. So we know we got, we got to continue to improve and that's going to come internally and externally. So, um, you know, we got a, I think a great group here. Um, those guys showed, uh, what they can, what they have the the potential to do, and now um, you know, Mike, Mike, and I both talked about it at the end of the season. You know, big off season. You know, years to come to to continue to grow um, and continue to learn from this playoff exit and what can we do to go further. But um, you know, we we're always going to have to continue to improve this team no matter what, uh, because as we'll see, um, you know, whether it's staff players. Um, you know, you're going to have to replace guys even if you're having success. So, um, you know, that's, uh, that's just the challenge for us going forward. Monty, what did you see from your two All-Stars throughout the course of this season, not only as individuals but as a pairing? And how does it change roster construction for you when you have those two guys locked in? We, again, we do a lot of um, – you know, kind of planning and forecasting of, of what it's going to look like. And um, we talked about it when we initially traded for, for Domas and our, and our vision. But um, until it comes together, it's, you know, you, you're not sure exactly what it's going to look like. But those two guys have, have just, I think, surpassed expectations both individually and with each other. Um, and then really ultimately with how their teammates play off of them and play with them. Um, so, you know, seeing that's been, been great. Um, and, uh, you know, those two guys just, they not only are great individually, they make the game easier for others, but guys love to play with them. Uh, their unselfishness, their ability to uh, make their teammates better, um, their personalities, um, all those things make, uh, you know, give us a chance to, to be pretty special. Yeah, Monty, one of the first things you did when you got the job was give De'Aaron Fox that max extension. I'm curious now, you know, three years later, um, where have you seen him grow the most, maybe as a, a player and a person? I think De'Aaron um, – De'Aaron certainly made some strides this year. Uh, we all saw that. But on the other hand, and a lot of people in this room, I think, saw what De'Aaron could do. And in a lot of ways, it's just the, the national media, the public catching up to that, um, him being on a bigger spotlight in the playoffs. Um, but to go into your first playoffs and do what he did and then to continue to do it with you know playing through an injury – um, and come up just one half short is incredible. And, uh, you know, and now he knows it's, it's on him to continue to, to grow and lead this team and um, take us deeper into the playoffs. But um, he's had, he had a fantastic season, and, and uh, he's going to get a ton of accolades. He already has, and uh, they're well-deserved. And, um, you know, he's going to continue to grow as not just a player but a leader for us like he's done. Hey, Monty. Um, what would you – character I mean what would you identify as maybe your priority heading into this offseason and would you have would that be any different than maybe what it had been around say trade trade deadline uh, as the evolution of the season goes on did it change at all as you enter to the point where you are now no I think it's it's always good to see our guys and um I think almost every challenge that came up, if they didn't knock it out the first time, um, you know, they, 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 were, they were able to overcome it pretty quickly. And um, so seeing our guys uh, do that, not just in the regular season, but then, you know, 
you, you get down three two to the champs. You got to go to their home court, and you know we win by whatever it was eighteen nineteen points. Um, obviously, game seven didn't go the way we want, but that's a big step. That game six win, uh, all that stuff is going to factor in. You know, we got to sit down here, take a breath, um, you know, hug our families for a little bit, uh, but then we'll get back to it next week, and we'll have all those conversations about how do we go forward. Um, but we 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 have a fantastic group here. Um, we have a lot of youth. Um, which means that those guys have room to grow. Uh, but it also means that there's a, you know, a, a challenge for them to continue to grow. It's not, you know, nothing is guaranteed as we know in this business. And um, so, you know, we had, I don't even know, five or six guys in the building today. So, which is a great sign. Um, and uh, we know those guys are going to work, but it's just going to get harder each step from here. And, um, you know, continuing to, to answer those challenges is going to be, um, you know, what's put in front of us. Uh, Monty, congratulations, first of all, on the award and, and everything this year. Um, how much how much flexibility, positional flexibility, do you see in the group you have? And specifically, like, the three, four, or five spots, do you guys see Keegan as a guy who, depending on, like, what's available to you in the offseason, could, could Keegan move from one spot or another between the three and the four? Would you consider, you know, Domas flexible in terms of the four and five spots? I think we have a lot of versatility, which has been good. Um, you know, throughout the season, I think we saw Keegan guard guard fours. He guarded Jordan Poole to start a couple of the playoff games. Um, so his versatility on the defensive end, for sure. Um, I think we saw offensively what, what he can do. Um, Domas, we, we've seen, I think, uh, again, he's played with, with, uh, with centers before that are bigger than him, and, and he can – play, I think, both positions on both ends, which gives us um, the ability to kind of, you know, have options to build to build around. But um, yeah, it's certainly important. The more of that you have, the more options it gives you down the road, uh, the more options it gives coach in a game or throughout a season. And, um, you know, I think we had some pretty good versatility with our guys, um, which is just, uh, just another nice thing to have. But um, yeah, the ability to to just start with De'Aaron and Domas and, and be able to fill in around those guys. Um, so many so many guys can play with them, and they'll make them look good, um, that it makes our job a little easier. Monty, first off, congratulations. Uh, Domas said he was going to a specialist on Monday. I wonder if you have an update on his medical status, if he will need surgery or not. No update right now, but, um, yeah. Uh, knowing Domas, uh, I don't – he, he uh, is as tough as they come. Um, whatever he needs to do, I know he'll uh, he'll be ready to go next year, but no update right now. Monty, I'm curious about the timeline for this team getting to the playoffs from when you got hired, if this was ahead of schedule, if this was later than – I'm sure it was later than you would have liked. You would have liked it right when you got here. But the timeline with that and then the amount of success that you had this year with Mike Brown his first year, if that was kind of ahead of schedule in your mind. I think the – I was talking about it with uh, with a few folks, but – it was – obviously, we would have loved to make the playoffs my first year, but the way that it happened this year, uh, especially with the COVID restrictions and different things with, lack, you know, not fans not allowed in the buildings and those types of things, um, it would it would have been a, a bit of uh, a letdown if we didn't have the – I mean, the, the fans were absolutely amazing. Um, you know, couldn't even hear announcer Scott um, – for the uh, the player intros in game game one, and um, so that was that part I think was special. Um, again, we we try not to put a, a timeline on it. Um, you know, we said we want to make the playoffs as, as soon as we can, such that we can, you know, build this thing out. And uh, you know, I think we're in that position. So I would uh, I would say you know a success for step one and and on to step two. Money, hey, way back here. Uh, a little over a year ago, last February, you had pulled the trigger on acquiring Demonis through the trade, giving away Tyrese Halliburton. At the time, needless to say, was met with some heated opinions, even criticism of some sort. You look a year later, you're sitting up there executive of the year and, you know, had this incredible successful season. I know you're a very humble person, but is that kind of like a I told you so kind of moment, you know, just trusting the process and good things will happen. If, if I knew we would be here right now, maybe I would have said it at the time. But again, we, 
We, uh, we felt very good in what Domas could do for us and how he would pair with De'Aaron. Uh, we still had a lot of work to do. Um, we had a big summer after that, that that really helped to fill in around those guys and solidify what ended up being the, the playoff team. But, um, you know, look, we, we, we know when, when fans or um, media or whoever is saying something about a transaction, what they're really saying is, like, I want this to work out. And so sitting here this year, it just, it just means that, um, you know, we're, we're happy that we've reached this, this point. Um, and, uh, again, we'll continue to take, take bets that we think have a good chance to work out. We're not going to, we're not going to bat a thousand. Um, and, uh, so there's going to be other times where we take them and they don't, don't work out, but we've, we've had a nice run, uh, credit to my group there, uh, for pushing me on a lot of them and, uh, you know, and credit to Mike and the players for ultimately you know, putting it all together. Um, so, you know, we, we talked a lot about like the individuals we bring in and um, the talent level and who they are as human beings, but you never know what it's going to be, especially when you have a ton of turnover like we had, new coaching staff. I think we turned over half the roster. Um, you don't know what it's going to look like. And so credit to those guys. Um, I know they had a lot of great comments the other day about the, um, you know, just the camaraderie that the team had and how they were all pulling for each other, um, you know, how Mike and their staff helped do that. And so to me, that's the special part um, is seeing it all come together, um, you know, and not knowing what, what's going to happen. Monty, I'm curious after this remarkable season, if there was one decision maybe that sticks out more to you that helped you get over the hump of getting the season to the playoffs or if if you think you know it's also paired with some luck and a bunch of decisions that were made yeah i don't think it was one i don't think it was one um it was look we like i said we we try to each decision we try to put ourselves in a better spot and um we've had big trades we've had signings um we've had hirings obviously coach uh, all those things go into it, and uh, and certainly a nice little sprinkle of luck uh, here and there doesn't doesn't hurt. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's never one thing, and I think this this time in particular, it was it was many many things, um, and not just not just the guys that we brought in, the guys that were here, uh, who took steps, who who bought into what um, you know a, a new coaching staff was was preaching, um, fit in with their new teammates, so. Um, there's a ton of credit to go around, and um, it's it's uh, it's testament to all those folks. Marty, I know part of the draft process for you guys is projecting out players, and and you have models that that help you do that. I'm curious how Keegan did relative to what you projected for him. I know obviously you guys are high on him, and and Mike talked about him, you know, being in a rare position as a lottery pick who's starting for a playoff team. But just in general. How did Keegan perform this season relative to your expectations, and and what do you need him to improve upon going into next year? Yeah, I was I was hoping I was be able to read off Keegan Burry Rookie of the Year on here, um, but that was not to be. But um, you know, uh, a rookie who started seven games in a playoff series um, was, if not, I believe, the most winning impact rookie on the court this year, um, and. While we didn't ask him to come in and shoot 30 shots, he certainly could have. I mean, he was the leading scorer in college basketball last year. Uh, but to come in and know what we need, which is actually defend multiple positions, uh, hit shots, cut to the basket, play off our, our veterans, um, I thought it was a fantastic year for him. Um, I, I, I wish I could say I knew he was going to come in and shoot 40% and hit over 200 threes, but – uh, testament to him, he com- came in and surpassed expectations. Um, and uh, for him, it's just, I think he said it, it's just continued learning experience. I think we even saw the playoffs being a microcosm of his season and, um, you know, hopefully what his career is to come. And um, he just got better and better as the playoff series went on and um, and was one of our best players in game six and seven. Um, so, you know, I think uh, I-, I wish he had gotten more accolades, but uh, – the good thing about Keegan is he doesn't care, uh, and uh, he knows that he contributed to winning, and um, we're going to need him to just continue to take on more and more going forward, and he's going to be able to do that, I think. Monty, two things. Uh, number one, like midseason, you didn't even have a contract for next season, and that was like a, a big topic of debate, and here you are with executive of the year. How much does that sort of – what does it mean to you to get that and, and to know that you're going to be here long term? And then also – 
every time we hear Monty, it's always Monty and Wes. How much has Wes meant to you in this three-year journey as you've taken on your first job? Well, I'm, uh, I think my wife is, is the most happy, so we can settle in. Um, it was – this is actually – I think I mentioned this before, but this is the first, like, house I've bought. We rented in, in Houston. We lived, I think, in – eight places in nine years. So, um, it's just nice to call something home and, um, you know, my kids love it here. And so that part's fantastic. Uh, in addition to all the people, you know, in the organization that we get to work with and be around and, you know, you guys and the community has been fantastic, but, um, yeah, I know it's, it's, uh, yeah, Wes gets mentioned a lot and he does a ton for us. And, uh, you know, he would then point to Phil and who runs our draft process. And I get to take credit for all Phil's fantastic lottery picks. And then Phil would point to Paul, who was the GM of the year in Stockton and Paul would point on down the line. So, um, and I talked about it too. We're, we're, we're going to, the sign of a good organization is that, uh, people are going to move on and, you know, Wes is going to be a GM again some days, already built a 60 win team, which, you know, I haven't even got to 50 yet. So, uh, and uh, like Phil and Paul, who I just mentioned, are going to run a team someday and we're going to have to backfill them. And, um, you know, I hope, I hope those things come because it means it's healthy for our organization, but um, yeah, it's a group effort and uh, those guys do a ton and, um, you know, especially the times when uh, I'm not at my best, which, you uh, as they can say, happens probably more often than I'd like. But uh, those guys keep keep pulling me through. You uh, you talk about you know needing a or wanting to take the leap next year. Uh, your regular season statistical profile would obviously scream defense, um, but you did defend at you know at times in that first round series much better than the regular season. How much do you take from what you saw in the playoffs defensively, and do you expect the priority still to be kind of to improve on that end going into the off season? The biggest thing is, as we talked about, we a 48 win team is 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 a success for us this year. But we're gonna have to build on that and continue to try to be better. Um, you know, our net rating was in the two to three range. That's gonna have to improve. And so, whether that comes from, you know, if we can somehow add to the number one offense and get that to plus five or plus six, great. Um, I think more likely that comes from the defensive end, just given where we were, uh, respectively, on each end of the court and. Um, you know, and Mike's could always say our defense isn't good enough, even when that's number one too, uh, which is what makes him great. But uh, yeah, our really our goal is going to be how do we improve? You know, whether it's maintain our offense and make our defense better. Uh, does that come f from internal improvement? Do we need something externally to help that? Uh, can we improve both? That would be my goal. Um, and uh, you know, I think our offense showed a lot this year, but like you said, our defense at times showed what it can do. And to guard. To guard those guys, how we did for, for stretches. Um, obviously, I know Mike pointed to some of the offensive rebounding in Game Seven. There were, you know, it wasn't perfect, but um, you know, we we guarded and um, we can do it. Uh, we can be better um, just with what we got here, and uh, we'll continue to look at ways to improve that externally also. But um, we know we just got to get we got to get the the ball's got to continue to be pushed forward um, for us to get where we want to go. Monty. Um... See, uh, Jeff Petrie, he, he's just getting back to the executive uh, of the year. Uh, of course, you know, Jeff uh, won it several years ago. Now you and Pete Carrillo, you know, he's been part of this organization. Um, I do want to highlight that uh, Mitch Henderson won on this floor. They beat Arizona. What, did you take any stock, you know, coming from an a Ivy League institution, you know, and take any stock in, you know, uh, what you do and how it affected your career? Uh, well, I appreciate you putting my name in with, like, you know, Jeff Petrie, who's a 20-point game scorer and rookie of the year, and Coach Carrillo, who's a Hall of Famer, uh, Mitch Henderson, who's uh, pretty iconic uh, in Princeton basketball lore. Um, you, you won't find my name in many Princeton record books, um, but you can – I did have one one touchdown catch. If you want to look it up, Tony. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to uh, to have a little bit of a Princeton uh, um, kind of thread running through here. Um, and uh, I was actually bummed that I didn't get to see the Sweet Sixteen run here. I was I was out on the road scouting. But um, um, you know that that part's cool. But um, just a little footnote to uh, to I think what what really matters here, which is what our players are doing, the fans and their, their experiences. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, we're, we're best viewed when, when, you know, we're not in the spotlight. Um, you know, when we're 
just sitting back and, and watching our guys go out and compete and win. And uh, so that's what, uh, you know, I think is the most special. Uh, Monty, I think they should have got you the ball a lot more that year at Princeton. <laughs> um, the, to follow up on Slater's question about defense, um, it, it, shooting was a big priority last year. You also mentioned defense. You obviously addressed the shooting. So as you, you go into this summer, I just wonder, is there a, is that a delicate balance for you? Do you have to, to make sure you maintain the same level of shooting for the system you guys have, have put in place here? And, um, and and if you could maybe just speak a little more about defense and, and where you feel like the, the specific needs are on that side. Yeah, shooting, um, especially as we as we saw this year, and in the NBA is just going to become more and more important. So, um, you know, shooting is always going to be something we need to put on the floor, especially just to maximize Domas and De'Aaron and just the incredible space they create. Um, but, yeah, every time, you know, you always want to sh continue to shore up your deficiencies, but you don't want to pull on one string and, um, you know, lose another. So uh, we're going to have to do it in a way that, you know, we were able to put all the things we need on the floor for both offense and defense. So, um yeah, I don't know. Delicate balance. Everybody's has the same challenge. But yes, we need to we need to maintain and improve. We can't just make trade offs that keep us in the same spot. Um, and uh, yeah, defensively, I thought we did a lot of good things. Um, Mike did a fantastic job just laying a foundation, um, especially for a new coach to come in and and try to do this with a bunch of new bodies. It's not going to be perfect from day one, but um, despite our you know maybe game seven. Our defensive rebounding was top 10 all year. That's fantastic. That's a, a lot of effort and just getting in the mix. Um, you know, for we're really not like a huge team this year. Um, we, we didn't foul. We didn't give teams easy buckets, um, you know, by staying at the free throw line. Um, we, we turned teams over. Um, you know, obviously teams were able to f find some success in the paint, but that's, you know, in some ways the, uh, the makeup of our team this year. So – you know, we'll look at ways to, to maybe shore that up, but we want to do it in a way that we're continuing to, you know, do what makes us special. And, you know, th this year that was that was our offense. And, you know, we, sh we showed defensively that we can be better. And if we get that thing, you know, like, like I said to Anthony, um, you know, we can keep our offense where it is, improve our defense. Um, and now we're, you know, now we're hitting some of those – some of those indicators that say, you know what, this is a contending team. So um, that's going to have to come both internally and externally. Just a couple real quick. I, I, I'm curious, you know, you, you start off taking this job and here you are sitting today as executive of the year. I'm just wondering, what do you know now that maybe you didn't know then that you were going to, you know, within that court, that journey to get here today? Like what, what was kind of like the, I don't know, the biggest takeaway from when you took the job to where you are today? Ah. Uh, uh, yeah, I wish I would have known. <laughs> it would have been a little less stressful at certain points. Um, but, uh, no, it's, uh, you learn so much of this job and, um, you know, credit to, we got Alvin West has been a GM, Joe Dumars was here, um, and on and on the people who have just lent their advice and experience to me along the way has been huge. And, um, you know, I hope I'm at a better spot as an executive now than I was when I came in. Um, but, uh, that would just be because of, you know, the people who have helped me along the way. Um, but, you know, really it's just about getting good people in here because you can't do it alone, uh, not even close. And, uh, you gotta, you gotta lean on those folks. And, uh, we've done a, uh, great job, I think, of the people that were already here, the people we brought in, um, not just the, the players that we talk about, but our staff. Um, you know, they've all done a fantastic job to just help support me and this, this whole organization. And then, you know, there's obviously a lot of curiosity around Sasha Vezinkov. I just wonder how realistic of a possibility that can become for next season and maybe conversely how strong the desire is of you guys wanting to land him here. Yeah, Sasha's a guy, obviously, we traded for the rights last year and uh, continue to track. Uh, he's playing in the EuroLeague playoffs right now. So um, right now we're enjoying watching watching him and his team, and they've had a fantastic year. And, um, you know, Olympiacos is a fantastic club. And, um, you know, we've been able to, to get to know him a little bit. And, um, you know, so, again, we'll sit down and see what our offseason look like um, here in the few, next few weeks, and uh, that'll be a decision for later in the summer. But uh, right now enjoying watching him in the playoffs.